Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Wolf. With me is Doa. What's up, Wolf? It's gonna be an awesome day of Code A. I'm doing great, man. How are yeah. you? I'm doing actually fantastic. It's a little bit bittersweet, but it's still good to be here. The matches today are gonna be amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Yes. I can't wait to get started. We're gonna see July Zerg. We're gonna see Slayer's Boxer. We're gonna see Marine King Prime. We've got a star-studded cast, and yeah. you know, Code A is going to be like that now. You know, with only eight players kind of getting through and staying in Code S each season, Code A is going to have well, nearly everybody in it, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, we're going to get to see uh, a lot more overlap. I, I really like the new format. I think it's I like the new well. format too, and and you guys can see how much more exciting I feel the GSL is already yeah. just from watching this format. You know, I mean, I we're agree. at the end of the Code S finals is this weekend. Make sure you tune into that. But, you know, that the results of that were a little bit surprising. Now we've got all these players in Code A, like July Zerg versus Genus is our first match. That's not something people really expected to see. Yeah. And I think it's it's actually what should be seen. You know, these two players aren't the best of the best by any means. So now here's how you can watch two streams at the same time. For those of you guys who want to go tune in, I believe Kaldor is casting today. Yeah, he's over at the GOM TV offices about an hour away from us or so. It's quite the trip by Subway, but he is casting all by his lonesome yeah, self, man. so you, tune in for that. You didn't know yesterday my subway train just stopped, and I yeah. almost didn't make it there on time. I actually had to run out of the, the subway. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen the studio. Too. Sometimes they just stop randomly. Yeah, I think there was probably some sort of problem. I was listening with my headphones, so uh, I don't know what happened. but. <laughs> well, there's our results from yesterday. As you can see, Lucira took down Slayer's Alicia. OGS Finn dominating TSL Pult. Bomber basically dominating JYP and Lucky but basically dominating OGS Nada. It was a yeah, uh, and look at this pretty today, excited day. On my side of the bracket, you know, when I was casting these solo, we yeah. had only two O's all day. So it was a right. quick little day and Cezanne actually took Tastar and like took him like he was wrapping paper and just <laughs> ripped him up. And then you like threw him in a blender. It was terrible, man. <laughs> it's like when you kill a zealot and their like spirit tries to float up, but Cezanne grabbed the spirit, like threw it on the ground and started hitting it with a baseball bat again. He's like, I'm not done with you yet. Yeah, man. Watch out for <laughs> Cezanne. He actually crushed Tassadar. It was crazy. Well, here are the matches that you will not see on this stream. This is what Kaldor is going to be casting. It's going to be Hero versus ASD, Love Six versus Don Regu, Inca versus Teja, Nova, Supernova, that is, versus Squirtle. He's not just a regular Nova, he's a Supernova. He's a Supernova. That's right. And on our side of things, Wolf and I are going to be casting MVP Genius versus Startail July, MVP Monster versus Startail Curious, Slayer's Boxer himself versus Startail Virus. And Liquid Xenio, newly joining Liquid versus Marine King Prime. It is going to be a pretty awesome day. I'm so psyched to be here. You know what, though? I'm actually like, well, oh, also do this. Like, winner prediction on GOMTV.net. Go sign up. You don't need to, like, buy a subscription or anything to do it. You can predict a winner. It's kind of fun to see, you know, what the community thinks. Because uh, we do look at those during the cast and talk about them, too. So, yeah, it's kind of cool to see. Yeah, absolutely really like go it. and do those predictions. It's really cool yeah. to see what you guys think. Uh, is who's going to win because we talk about who the fan favorite is mm -hmm. and sometimes we're actually wrong and you guys know like, well no. I mean, sometimes I'm a little bit surprised I, I figured you know the fan favorite would be this and then I look and I'm like yeah. oh actually it says 70% says Marine King's going to win it for example yeah that's true sometimes the community uh, doesn't always agree with everything we say yeah. believe it or not well I would say the fan favorite Marine King versus Zenio would be Marine King but we'll have to wait and yeah. see you guys should vote for that here is Genius yeah. Now he beat Symbol in round one. Yeah. So he took him apart. He used carriers, actually, in that match. Yeah, I was able to cast right. that. He actually had 12 fully upgraded carriers just marching towards Symbol's base. He killed him with that. Not it was bad. quite interesting to watch. Yeah, Genius has always been an entertaining player. Right from the very beginning of StarCraft II, I've really enjoyed watching him play. He hasn't really gotten you know a lot of big victories. He did win BlizzCon back in 2010. So he does have a big tournament win under his belt, but that was very early in StarCraft II. The game wasn't figured out yet much at all, so we'll see what he can do today against this guy, StarTail July, one of my favorite Zergs to watch. He's so aggressive. They call him the God of War. Yeah, they do. You can see how he got here. He fell out of Code S by losing to Puzzle twice. Yeah. And uh, he was able to get a win off of Clyde, but was not able to get out of the group, so... Here he is. And you know, these two players are so unpredictable. Yeah. They're the types of players who, they definitely can play a macro game, but you're so scared that they're not going to, you have to make an extra cannon at your natural. You're not sure. 
I'm not scared, Wolf. I'm just excited. I'm excited, too. Look at Jalizer's keyboard. It's all red. Oh, that's like, a, I guess, a special uh, Zalier keyboard that he uses, apparently. I don't yeah. know. It's just because he plays so hard. He's got, like, you know, like musicians play until their fingers are bleeding. Jalizer yeah. does that with StarCraft He's too, so, so aggressive, man. But he's, he's so have tough. That. He doesn't want people to know, so his keyboard is red, you know? Oh, I see. It's like there were ancient generals in ancient history that wore, like, red tunics, so that if they got stabbed, no one would notice. Because they wanted to look tough. There you go. That makes sense, man. Jalizer is like an ancient war general. <laughs> Absurd. He, he also, is, his keyboard can be put in fire, it won't take any damage. Sure <laughs> got, like, plus five versus fire damage. Oh, I love this song. When this song plays, I get so excited. All right, it's Antigua Shipyard. <laughs> Daybreak and if necessary, Taldarim Altar. Yeah, should be a pretty good, uh, pretty good situation here. Especially if we get to Taldarim Altar, I'd love to see these guys play on a bigger four-player map. Obviously, Daybreak is bigger, but I really want to see him play on Taldarim Altar. So we're hoping for a game three. We'll see what happens. The loading screen is just about done, so we are going to jump right into the game, guys. It's going to be our first match of the day: MVP Genius versus Star Tail July. Who's going to come out on top and get the win in game one? I'm stalling for time because the loading screen is still sitting there. You say something now, Wolf. Something now, Wolf. Thank you. All right. So still stalling for time. <laughs> you can always count on you. you know? <laughs> All right. The game started. Let's get inside. See what happens. This is the GSL. All right. Thanks to our wonderful sponsors. We're going to bring it in real close to the Nexus here, ladies. To introduce our first player from the team MVP, a silky smooth Protoss, he is... The BlizzCon champion. I don't know why I became like AM radio caster for this. I liked it. You should do it again for this one. Should I? Yeah, right. I like that. All right, all the way from Char, we've got a spiky little number. Ooh, look out, ladies. He might prick you. He is. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> That's, that was horrible. That was just terrifying, actually. That right. was a terrifying Hydralis shot we just saw there, too. I know. Good thing he's is that small. You, like, see him on the screen. You're like, oh, look out. And he's, oh, he's only three inches tall. So Whoa. Huh. See that? Yeah. Gas first from Genius. All right. So, uh, Mr. Protoss player, do you want to tell us what that might mean? Well, it could mean any number of things, and we've been seeing a lot of these quick Stargate plays. Oh, here is their predictions. Quick, July, 70% wow. to Genius Man. is approximately 30. You know, and, and like you mentioned earlier, I would have guessed it would have been more even, honestly. Yeah, I, I would have thought so too. I mean, July Zerg definitely is a fan favorite as far as who uh, people want to win, I would say, but... You know, I don't know if he's really favored skill-wise here with how he's been playing recently. Huh. But with this gas first from Genius, it may mean he wants to go for a fast Stargate, but most likely we're going to see a Dark Templar expand or possibly Blink play. You know, Genius is the guy you can't predict. And if he goes for a Blink Stalker all-in, that's like a super outdated old-school build to do in this matchup, but I wouldn't put it past Genius to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, like we talked about a little bit earlier, he is really a player that will do anything, and he has done pretty much everything there is to do, you know? And yeah, he's gonna put up a complete wall off, it looks like, with that cybernetic score. You guys can see it, because the drone is gonna kill the hatchery by himself. But there's a complete wall off of Genius's base now. And, uh, oh, no, it's not actually. Uh, yeah, there's a gap bad. there for the Zealot. Oops. It will be a tight wall off when the Zealot comes out, of course. Second gas going down for Genius right now. And uh, I think Genius is, you know, we were talking about this a little bit earlier before the cast, actually. It was like, Genius is the guy who will be the only person to foregate in six months in this matchup. You know, uh, he's yeah. going to do something. Yeah. I think we might see a Blink Stalker all in, to be honest. This, well, it's going to be pretty interesting regardless. I mean, it's, I don't know, what do you Ooh, think about it? Is, there's the Stargate. Okay. So I thought, like, at first when I saw this, huh. I was like, oh, he's going to do one of these newer Stargate builds. But I... I don't know, Genius is just so hard to predict, man. Now I gotta ask, what do you think of using the pylon as part of the wall? That's like been a big debate in Protoss for a long time, and trying that against a player like Jalizerg is known to be crazy and try Baneling Bus every once in a while. What do you think about that? Well, it is kind of a tough choice that you have to make signs on. In this particular position for Genius on this map, I think it's pretty good to use it like that, um, because if you make your core there and you try to wall with the pylon, you have this weird gap and you have to do it very carefully, the stalker won't be able to get out. Yeah. And I know Protoss players out there who play on this map on the ladder know what I'm talking about. It's a little bit more difficult to wall with the pylon not as part of the wall on this map. 
see what we're going to see here. I think it's going to be a Void Ray, of course. And but it is. there it is. All right. This could perhaps just be a Void Ray Expand. Uh, and I think that's... Honestly, if we see anything else, it'll be really shocking to me. He hasn't hidden any other tech. He hasn't added any more gateways. Well, Genius does have that kind of habit, too, of even when he does something normal, he does it in a different way, too. And that's kind of nice. It throws your, Anything you can do to kind of throw your opponent off a little bit is, of course, really beneficial to do. Yeah. I'm curious to see how July is going to react to all this. I'm playing pretty standard so far. Nothing out of the ordinary from his side of the map quite yet. Yeah, Zergling Speed just finished. He's sending Zerglings all over the map to try to spot for any hidden structures. And yeah, Genius just going to send that Voidery out to kill Overlords. He wants to make sure that his Nexus is not oh. spotted when it goes down. And he is going to find one. Yeah, he definitely will. Yep. Red line of death pointing right at the Overlord. And uh, Engineering Bay, not Engineering Bay, Evo Chamber is almost done already for July, so he's going to have some spores up in time, most likely. And uh, there are a few Zerglings out here, but not enough to huh. cancel the Nexus. Genius yeah. is going to have to be careful, though. He's going to have to go and engage us. Looks like he's going to wait for the Void Ray to help out. That's a good idea. Warp Gate research wasn't quite finished yet, so had to bring the Void Ray back this time. And so, yeah, just an old-school Void Ray expand with gas first. Yeah. You know, an interesting way to do this. I'm kind of curious about the timings of that. I've not seen, you know, a gas first for this particular reason before. It didn't really seem like it sped things up all that much. Right. Honestly. The Void Ray seemed like it came out around the same time. You know, obviously it's not a, an offensive thing. He's keeping the Void Ray close to his base, except well now he's moving it out. But, you know, in general, it's not one of those super aggressive Stargate openings, it seems like. Just the one Void Ray, so Phoenixes or anything. Yeah, and in fact, he's just checking right now to see if July has a fast third. And the answer is no. July does have spores up and his main and his natural. His lair is almost finished as he takes his gases at his natural. Okay. Well, here Queen a little bit undefended here. Ooh, but there's just a... Didn't fire first, so the Queen is going to chase him away. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that Void Ray not quite taking any hull damage. But getting pretty close. Yeah, close call there. Yep. Four shields left. And a uh, Hydra Den on the way from July. Now, does that seem like a bit of a... That seems like a bit of an overreaction to me, since that there's basically been only one Void Ray made out of that Stargate, so... Yeah, I think if he huh. makes the Den, it's okay, as long as he does not make very many Hydras, or he may not yeah. even make any Hydras at all. It may just be, just in case That's you want to do this, I can make the Hydras to react, but I'm not sure I'm just gonna make this Den. The Hydra Den itself doesn't cost that much money, just having it there as a safety net is something nice. You know, Genius is getting that Twilight Council right now, I've and he hasn't made anything more from the uh, from the Stargate, and he's getting plus one. I've got a feeling you're right, I think this is going to be a Blink Stalker build. Yeah, it looks like it may very well be. He is taking his fourth gas as natural, he's moving out with a decent amount of sentries, he's making a second Twilight Council for some reason that is natural. What? Uh, yeah, he's doing that, so... All right, well, this is a bit odd. Um, you know, this has been something that... Players have done quite a bit recently, and when I cast, Not people like to make <laughs> yeah, people like to make two Twilight Councils. So yeah, this is like the third or fourth time it's happened this season. Yeah, man, I I'm just like I'm like, is this really happening? Oh, I think he canceled it. He canceled it. Yeah, he did yeah. cancel it and he made a robotic facility in its place. Okay. Uh, so probably just was a missed key. I mean, that's the common thing to do. You can't really tell what building it is if you just look at it without clicking on it. So if you're moving really fast, it's easy to put down the wrong building sometimes. Very true. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to move out with your sentries, you're trying to put some pressure on. Yeah, that's very true. Oh, wow. Huh. Caught the Void Ray in the middle of the map, off creep with Hydras. Yeah. That's, that's an oops moment for genius. No kidding, you don't see that very often. Huh. And the Spire's almost done here as well, so July, you know, like we talked about, only making just enough Hydras to stay safe, not going overboard with it. Oh, and there's a lot more gateways being added on for genius. And yeah. there's Blink on the way as well. Blink so. a little bit late. He could have gotten it a lot earlier. I feel like Genius yeah. is kind of just uh, playing this a little bit nervous, even killing the Automaton 2000 there. Yeah, the Automaton 2000 really didn't have anything to do with what was going on in yeah, the game. Just because wow. you forgot that you made two Twilight Councils, you didn't start your Blink <laughs> immediately, doesn't mean you have to take it out on the Automaton, just okay? frustration, man. Maybe it's... Maybe it's like that darker than black anime, and whenever he like makes two Twilight Councils, he has to like pay the price. Maybe that's so, man. It's like a really, I don't know, overambitious reference, but well, you know, there right. aren't that many creatures on this map, so Genius can't afford true. to make very many more mistakes. Can't afford to make very more, many more Twilight Councils. <laughs> very true. Oh, 
Pylon gets found by the Mutas. But in the same regard, now the Mutas have been found by Genius. So he knows there are Mutas out. Starts Kansas yeah. main immediately. Well, I think with Blink finishing up, he should be relatively okay against these Mutas. You know, July is making quite a bit more of them, but Genius is in, I suppose, as good a position as any to defend it at this point. I would agree completely. There aren't very many Mutas out right now, so because he was able to see them on time, he's completely fine. He's got enough Stalkers at his natural. He's got the cannons up in the main. He's got a decent amount of Stalkers at his natural as well. His Templar Archives is about to finish, so he's probably going to start adding in some Archons, getting that Storm Research as well. Oh. Wow, nice spread by those Stalkers by Genius, too. Not really giving July any room to really move in and do any damage. Now, the good thing for July is that he is kind of keeping Genius in his base for now anyway, so something he's definitely trying to take advantage of by taking that fourth base on the left side of the map there. Yeah, I, I really like what July has done here. He made just the five Hydras, switched into Mutalist. Now he's adding a ton of Zerglings, 32 Zerglings in production right now. July has gloves to do this where he just gets a decent amount of drones up and he's like, now yeah. it's time to make attacking units. He just starts making them. It's like around 50 or 60 is usually where yeah. he stops. Where's he at right now? 57, yep. Well, that's, uh, well, that's Genius's work account. July's oh, at 70, right. but oh. he did just make another round of drones before that, after he, uh... I actually just do that? It's alright, don't worry. I don't haven't been fret. getting much sleep. <laughs> Sorry. It's alright. Here come the Mutas with the main, there are uh, three cannons here. Yeah, Blink Stalkers as well. July's gonna need to run for it. Yeah. Trying to pick off a couple Stalkers there that... I actually really like that he picked yeah. off those Stalkers. That was totally worth it. Not a cost-efficient trade, but it keeps Genius in his base. He's already up on supply. He's got a fourth base. If Genius can't leave his base, if he loses all those Mews, it doesn't matter as long as he trades okay. Yeah, absolutely. With Storm finishing up too, Genius should be just fine against these Mutas. And, you know, getting Storm like that is really going to give him the ability to move out on the map too, so... Yeah, this the timings that we're seeing here from Genius actually really remind me of OGS Hero's play, or Liquid Hero, I should say now. Yeah. He likes to get this Templar Storm up pretty quick when his opponent goes Mutas. And, you know, his build was very flexible. Well, this is starting to become a, a much more common way to play PvZ. You know, we're definitely seeing a lot of Protoss start to kind of adapt to this style that Zergs have started to do, too, with, you know, a lot of Mutas. It's going okay. This is going to be a huge attack for July. There are a lot of storms saved up, though. Yeah, those links aren't going to last very long against this. Oh, Bane Link's coming in from behind. A perfect flank from July, Zerg. That was, oh, but nice force fields though, too, and a lot of Bane Link's not doing a whole lot. Yeah, Maybe too many Mutas here. The Archon getting a yeah. nice hit off on all of them, but they're still alive. Yep. They can still do some damage at the very least. They will cause a cancel at this third base, I have to imagine. Well, with the amount of Hydras oh, and that. Zerglings coming in here, he can't really get over to that Nexus. He wants to desperately go over and save it. The Mutas don't have a lot of hit points. He yep. doesn't cancel it. Will he be able to save it? I don't think so. I don't think so. Even with Blink, I don't think he's going to be able to get there in time. No. There's one more Storm, but he can't get there. Yeah. Uh, and July trading so well, even though that wasn't the best engagement for him. He killed the Nexus, and now look at this. Wow, having to storm his own units to get rid of those Zerglings. A little bit of collateral damage there as well. July is being really aggressive here, and his mutas don't have a lot of health. I don't know about this. Well, I think it may just Might barely be enough, be enough and yeah. I think Genius is going to fall apart here. I guess so, yeah. He just doesn't have enough stalkers to handle it. He's continuing immortal production, and, and that's something that I don't really understand. It's a bit odd. I mean, what is he really planning on using those immortals against right now, you know? Yeah, it's... Yeah. Yep, more links coming in. Genius does have a good amount of zealots. Nice job cleaning up these probes that are long distance mining. Genius yep. not reacting in time, not pulling those probes away, losing a lot of them here. Yep. Now July with twice the supply of Genius. Yeah, more Mutas coming in as well. You're only seeing about maybe a third of the total amount that he has. Yeah, they're flying across the map like monkeys in Wizard of Oz or something, man. Those things always freak me out when I was a kid. They man. still freak me out a little bit. I don't honest. know. Flying <laughs> monkeys, those are just too weird for me, man. Although, I don't know. Have you ever seen Return to Oz? Never mind. GG! GG. And July Zerg takes game one off MVP Genius. Really well played. July just, he hits that magic number of drones and he goes, man. He's like, yeah. he's like, all right, you know, usually I go like 55 to 60, but we're at cross position, so I'll go 70 and a fourth <laughs> hatchery and then I'll make the units. He's like, I'll go 50 50 on this one. And then he's like, and I'm going to go. Yep. The July 2nd happened. He knew he could make it work. Yeah. And uh, tell yeah. everyone about the July 2nd. 
Oh man, if I do that, people are going to tweet at me that I talk about it too much. No, I, I think it's actually a, a cool thing, because well, I think it's very true. Here's my theory about July Zerg, and, and many of you have heard this before, but I, every in every game that July Zerg plays, there's a second. I like to call the July second, where it becomes the perfect opportunity to go all in and, and win. And it doesn't always work, but July is like really the only player out there that has that like snap decision making that's so good about when to you know just kill your opponent and stop trying to do any sort of economy, you know. Yeah. And he's just yeah. like, in this case, you, it wasn't an all-in, but he was just like, I'm gonna keep trading. Mm -hmm. You're stuck in your base. I have so much production. I have so much better economy. And Genius well, is like, well, for some reason I'm still making Immortals, I don't know. <laughs> well, the strange thing about that type of style that July Zerk has is it kind of flies in the face of, like, traditional good play, you know, the whole win your head, get more ahead. You know, he's found a way to sort of go around that rule to a certain extent, and, and you know, he does okay with it. He's Yeah, he's, he's yeah. doing what Zerg should do, which is to just keep trading and never allow the death ball to be formed. That's and I really yeah. like... Um, July's play overall in that entire match, he totally outclassed Genius. I think Genius got a little nervous. His mm. gas first build made sense, but it didn't... Well, It yeah. wasn't necessary, he could have just done a regular expand build, so his Nexus was a little bit late. Every and then, he, he scouted everything, and guess what? The, the, the last unit you want against Speedlings and Mutalis is an Immortal, and I feel like he was just so stressed out and he like didn't know what to do, he just kept making Immortals. Yeah, he just kind of kept, he just kind of went on autopilot. Yeah, I feel like he's a little bit nervous or something, he's not playing up to genius standards. Well, it's it's a little bit odd, you know, it looks like the crowd might be right with this one, you know, that July does have a, a bit of an overwhelming advantage here. Game two is going to be starting right now on Daybreak. Genius needs to win this one to stay alive, is he going to be able to do it? Let's move into the game.